Hey guys, working out in the shop today. It's eight degrees outside. I've got the power steering tour part on my 1965 Ford 3000 tractor. It's leaking around the upper seal in the steering column. I got the orbital valve all tore apart. It's pretty dirty. I put it in the parts washer. I cleaned everything up good. So there was some confusion because all these little plungers and check valves and springs and balls came flying out of this thing when I pulled it apart. I had to find some diagrams online to put it back together, so I thought I'd just make a quick video. Maybe it'll help you get yours back together if you get in the same spot I'm at. So here's your pistons. There's two of these little check balls. Three springs, six pistons, two check balls, and then there's two of these little, I'm not really sure what you'd call them, but they're a special piston check balls go between. So I'm going to show you how to get it back together. I'm going to use just a little bit of engine assembly lube. Maybe. I'm going to use a little bit of assembly lube to get this thing back together. First thing we're going to do is put this centerpiece back in. There we go. There's half a piston. Next, we put a spring on top. And then the other half of the piston, I've got plenty of oil on my gloves to lube this stuff back together. Okay, next is one of these little special plungers. It goes in this bottom hole, so if you're looking at, this is the valve from my point of view is the same way it would have come off the tractor. So you're looking at it from the hood. So this bottom hole is the hole closest to the seat when you pull this thing apart. The hole closest to the seat gets the special pistons and the check balls. So it gets a piston, then a ball. And I'm just going to use this to push that together. Another ball, 
And then the other piston. That's all there is to assemble the hydraulic valve. You just have to be careful when you lift this, they don't all fall out the back side. So that's finished, we'll set this off the side and then we'll put some new seals and O-rings in this thing we'll get it put back together. Okay, the next piece I have, this is the upper column seal and guide bearing. We're gonna pull this old seal, put in a new one. I got the seal puller. It should be really easy to just lift this out of here. I think it's really in there. Might have to take this and put it in the vise so we can get a little better hold on that. Okay, we're in the vise. There we go. There's the old seal. Put the old seal out. There's our new seal. Compare the two. Looks like our new seal is slightly thinner. Diameter is the same. Since it's what I got laying here. Just gonna use a little bit of this assembly lube again. Lube this seal. Carefully start it. All right, we've got it started. Get our seal driver. Go ahead and push that the rest of the way in. I'm a little bit concerned about the thickness difference. This is what I have, and I need to get this thing back together, so this is what I'm going to use. And if it causes me problems, I'm going to know why. Got our seal driver, matched up the diameter of our seal. Get this put in. sure we get lined up on the outer lip of it gently make sure we get it seated all the way make sure we don't put it in crooked Make sure we don't get our driver tool stuck like we just did. Yeah. Nothing goes well on video, I'm just telling you. You gotta make videos. It's everything that can will fight you when you make one. They'll make you look really stupid. 
next size driver. Use it to finish setting this seal. Almost. Just a touch more. Looking at it from the back side, making sure I'm down all the way. And I am, I'm fully seated. So there's our new upper seal. Here's our old O-ring. We're not gonna reuse it, it's pretty flat. We've got new O-rings. Look at that. Look at that. Boy, I should just rename my YouTube to watch me struggle at everything I do. What are the odds of getting a new O-ring to just lay in there like that old one? Let me go grab the new O-ring. Here's our new O-ring. Here's our old O-ring. Looks good. Set the old one off the old seal. just going to put a squirt of assembly lube in the o-ring just to hold it in place there we go that is our upper housing here's our next piece see our seal is down in there this one might be a little bit more difficult to pull there's an oil light bronze bushing down inside of there. Same thing, I'm gonna put this in the vise and see if I can use the seal puller to pull that seal out of there. And then here's our old O-ring and it's completely smashed. We'll get a new O-ring put on there. I was able to put this in the vise and get this old seal right out. Compare it to our new seal. be the same put a little bit of let me zoom you out just a little bit for this there we go put a little bit of assembly lube on the seal Try to get it started straight. There we go. I will find a driver that fits. There we go. Same thing, just gently. in nicely. Just a little bit more to go. Just a touch more. I believe that got it. 
looks to be fully seated. Might have to get a little hook to fish this O-ring out. Get this O-ring out of here. It is completely squashed. Just put a little drop of lube in that. Lay our new O-ring in. Work it around. Make sure we get it all oiled. Okay, there's our new upper seal and O-ring. Next thing we want to do is set this on our towel. And we need to put this rubber bushing back in top of the column. Just gonna squirt a little of this on there. There we go. So that is how you put new seals and O-rings into a Ford 3000 steering column. So if you turn the wheel hard, build up pressure and you get oil leaking out of your Ford 3000, it's probably these seals and these O-rings. When I would turn the wheel hard, it would just pour out on the gearbox and on my feet. When I pulled this apart, this upper part of the shaft housing was just completely full oil, which shouldn't be because that says this inner seal failed. So there's all of our assembled pieces. Thanks for watching.